So thanks, Kinesh. So I'm going to talk to you about how you can take your existing assets, your existing plants, and upgrade them with software. So customers have been asking us, you know, how can we connect the asset to the operations, to the dispatcher and trader? And help us do more with less. Help us capture you know, new market opportunities. And when you consider the market today, there's a lot of dynamics and a lot of complexity. Volatility of fuel price. You've got new players coming into the market, also being disruptive in themselves. And when you think about all of this complexity, how are you managing it today? The majority of our customers manage it through some disparate uh, point solutions, but also there's a lot of phone calls and quite a lot of spreadsheets in making that ha actually happen. The CFO has a, uh, a ERP system and the HRM, and then you also have the salesperson as a CRM. Why doesn't the COO have its own system. So as an industry, we've been collecting data for years. So this isn't new, but only about 2% of that data is actually utilized. So there's a not huge opportunity for us to be able to connect the operational technology world with the information technology and also with external data sets. So if we take a simple example of life. So we all know that life degrades over time. We have a design, and you know, normally the operation doesn't necessarily follow that original design. Then you have an anomaly or some kind of deviation, operational or, an, or a trip, that actually causes that life to degrade faster. How do you know and how can you avoid and how can you make that trade-off to make sure that you don't have that unplanned event? Now, you're managing this on a single component. Now take it to an asset. Now take it to a plant, and now try and make those trade-offs to that complexity of that market, you re need real-time uh, capability to make those right decisions to be able to capture those market opportunities. It's a lot of overwhelming complexity that you have to manage today. So if you take a look at the operation, so this is the connection of the people and also the plant. As I said before, there are some disparate systems, and you know, not all of those connections are made. And we heard from Ganesh, you know, about 40% of errors made are, are aligned to, to human error. So you heard about Predix. This is a system, which, this is the infrastructure which is able to sit on top of existing capability in order to connect everything from the operator all the way up to the boardroom. So we talk about connecting the sensor to the boardroom, and then the boardroom back down to the sensor. It has one user interface for all of these different personas. It's a familiar type of uh, uh, user interface. And you're able to make real-time decisions and real-time actions. So let's walk through a scenario. So as you look at your uh, capabilities today, you have a lot of experience and some design knowledge to be able to understand what those limits are. But imagine if you had software to help connect and, and, and identify that potential which you're losing today. If you take a look at this spider diagram, which you'll, you'll see in several slides later on, there is an operating window which you have today. There is a, a capability which you can access through software. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through some of the examples. So first one, asset performance management. So this is really the capability of connecting the assets, monitoring the assets, condition-based maintenance, managing anomalies, collaboration of engineers, and understanding how that connects back to, to the mission. So currently, it's an ecosystem of sensors. We have sensors that can, for example, look for a current imbalance on a turning gear. You can see if there's a wear uh, event taking place. We can give you peace of mind that you can continue to operate, but also help you plan through our asset performance management tool how you take that outage and, when, and, and what you need to do to be able to go do that. So in effect, the asset performance management helps increase availability and also reliability. Take the next example. How do you optimize your system? Let's take an example of startup time. So startup is an event in Europe, lots of cycling. How do you make sure that you bring the cost of that event down and you get the best operator performance always? 
we give you access to new markets potentially and also to uh, uh, help improve efficiency. And then the next one is really how can you take all of the complexity of all of those assets and model the thermal accounting across the entire system and across the fleet to be able to make sure that you are not losing efficiency in your, in your balance of plan or through your HRSG, where and how can you optimize that? If you think about how all of this comes together, you can improve efficiency and also uh, output. So start to look at this software definition of increasing that operational window which you can now have access through these applications. So I mean, how, how do we do this? You know, what you really need is a robust digital infrastructure to be able to capture these opportunities. First of all, it starts with getting connected. Once you get connected, your operational data starts to flow into the digital twin. That digital twin starts to run scenarios. What is the external data sets that you need to look at, whether it's humidity or it's market pricing. And how do you optimize that? Let the model run the simulations to actually define what that perfect configuration should be. And next, you know, predict maintenance issues and locate some of those early precursors of failures. Don't just turn the check engine light on and say, hey, we have to tell them how many more miles you can go. When will that uh, maintenance occur? How do you make sure that you're ready to be able to do that maintenance? There are a lot of questions that can potentially be answered now. Imagine if you could uh, make real-time trade-offs. So can I push the unit more to be able to uh, take advantage of an opportunity in the marketplace? Can I take out spinning reserve that's costing me you know, a significant amount of, uh, uh, of cost? The operators currently today limit some of that capability uh, as, as, as we see it. The digital, digital twin answers these questions. This is hugely transformative for our industry. If we take a look at uh, how we can understand the physics-based part of our components and really allow you to be more flexible. Flexibility is a huge challenge for, for, for the industry. These units are going through significant cycles and how do you make sure that you understand the real impact for reliability, for cost, for availability in those kind of dynamics? And if you take a look at the fleet, you can manage this in one single plant, and now you can compare it to the rest of the fleet. You can look for best practices. You can look for areas where the operation can be leveraged uh, from one plant to the other and start to manage your fleet uh, through managing through, through the digital twin. So I'd say data efficiencies have been tolerated for some time in the industry. You know, our world is changing drastically. There's a lot of opportunity still within the market. And what we've seen from our validation customers so far through ability to capture new opportunities in the marketplace, to be able to improve efficiency, whether it's in startup or in, uh, in, in uh, a load following operation, reduction of uh, um, unplanned downtime, and also reduction of operation and maintenance costs. We have evaluated there's about $50 million worth of uh, economic value that can be captured on an average of uh, a 500 megawatt block. So with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a very brief demonstration. So I have Aaron is here to, uh, to, to help me walk through this, uh, this, this demonstration of what the actual tool does. So I'm actually going to be the trader, the VP of trading. And I receive a notification on my watch saying, hey, you have a market opportunity next week. So let's go take a look. So if we mo move to the tool. Here we're in the tool, and just before I, I go through the details, this is based on operational and external data that is all visible through different lenses. So we're going to start with the VP of trading or the trader as they would see this information. So in here you can see the actual financials. So you can see revenue, projected costs. We can also see 
the uh, California LMP pricing forecast, as we see go out. If you scroll down, the line represents the potential pricing, as we see in an estimate on the future within this particular zone. The blue bar is how we actually performed. The red bar is the current actual capability available to bid into the market. And the green is our nameplate capability. So what we see is that there's a gap on capacity, nameplate capacity, and actual uh, production. Now, in these previous days, there isn't really an issue, but we do see a market opportunity on Thursday. So let's go see. So now we send a notification to the asset manager. And so this is the screen the asset manager sees. So they're managing all of these different plants. And we see that the Coloma plant has a red dot, so it's below target. And we also see for, for um, output and also for heat rate. So let's go take a look at what, what that means. So we drill down, and we can see that we have uh, three plants here. And then if we drill down again, we can take a look at which of the blocks is really causing us the problem. So we have one of the blocks producing 325, and it's actually significantly below target. So now we can go in and have a look. And what we see here, here we see that the uh, expected uh, output, there's going to be an up uptick on the 5th of October. That's because we have some activities planned. So you see the little dot? If you scroll down, we can see that we have uh, an activity, an online water wash planned for the 5th. And let's go down. And in, and, and in order to improve heat rate, we have several other activities that we, uh, we have planned. So now you can start to see and forecast how this is going to affect the output and heat rate of, of my equipment. So now let's go to the plant manager. But while we do that, we get an alert from our APM system, which says, hey, you've got an issue. You know, you've got an, a, ga a gas uh, valve leak, and you've got to take care of it. And if we scroll down, we can see that there's an action. Now, this action could have been put in by one of the customer engineers or could have been put in from, from, the, uh, uh, from a GE engineer. But it's been dispositioned that we need to take an action within three days. So now I have two issues. I've got to try and bring forward um, one of the activity. So if we go to the timeline, so now we go to the same asset and we go to its timeline. So we can see all of the activities planned for this timeline. So we see here that we have a maintenance event that's planned. And it's planned to be on the 5th. We scroll down. We can see that we had this analytical alert, which was uh, dispositioned. And we also have to take care of that. So now let's go and see if we can reschedule. So we go, we reschedule. We reschedule it for the 28th so that we can be prepared to be able to take on that, that potential uh, oper uh, opportunity we have in the market on Thursday. So now we're going to skip to the end. And we go, and we see on the same trader screen that now it's Friday. And we see that on Thursday, we actually uh, hit our, uh, our capacity. We hit the availability. There was actually an increase in the, in the, uh, the, the market price. And we can scroll up to the top, and you can see some of the financials that are displayed there. We increased the revenue, and we also had a better cost position because we improved that heat rate. This is a very, very brief overview of some of the capacity capability that we have today. And I encourage you to join us over in the tech hall to have a deeper dive of what we can do and what we're doing actually right now. So Aaron, thanks very much.